always easy to gauge what's going to be hatching in the early season, but this is a pretty reliable pattern. This is a granum or a sedge, and it's one of those go-to flies that you can actually fish in the middle of the day, perhaps when nothing's even apparently rising. It's the kind of fly that can pull a fish when it's not even expecting a hatch to be coming along. When you start to see granum on the river, they do start coming off sometimes around about lunchtime and especially when you know you're in the early part of the season and perhaps you haven't got the number of daylight hours that you want to fish deep into the evening this is a cracking fly to tie on and I'm going to tie this as an egg laying version um, one of the reasons I like doing this is it's just one of those trigger points uh, that I feel is really important to have on a fly you know you've got to ask yourself if there are a thousand of these things floating down the river why is a wild creature going to come and take your imitation ahead of all of the naturals and the reason is a little bit of bling something to attract their attention you know that picks it out from the swarm of naturals that are coming down so that's what I'm going to tie with this now main tying thread is dead simple it's an 80 olive thread and I'm just going to catch on my hook the hook I'll show you in a second when I finish catching this thread on is my favorite big dry fly hook which is a Kanak 130BL a barbless hook and this one is size 12 again tailor your fly to the size of the natural insects that live on your piece of river so I would actually normally fish this not in a size 12 but actually in a size 14 and that's simply because where I live the sedge patterns tend to be just a little bit little bit smaller so the the actual the size 14 is slightly more effective always worth chucking a big fly over the top though you never know okay so the egg laying bit that I was talking about I'm going to make out of this material here this is a phospho fiber which is fluorescent green uh, really catches the light and I'm just going to trim off a little length of this and catch it in at the tail end of the hook just with a few turns of thread and then I'm going to form basically a little bead which I'm going to use some resin to make it ping. Don't want to go too far around the corner but just far enough to get it out of the way of everything else. Now that's probably enough. Now I'm just going to use anti-clockwise turns here to just form what essentially will look like a little green hot spot. If you haven't got these phospho fibres please don't worry. You can just use some glow bright the green color I think it's number 12 or 14 can't remember offhand but you can see it's already starting to build up a quite interesting little structure around the tail end of the fly don't want to be too bulky but big enough so it gets seen that's the whole point it's there once you're happy just whip your material up the rest of the fly and tie off with your tying thread so it's secure and to trim off. Now just to add a little bit of added value to this I'm going to put some resin on it and you see what happens when this goes on it just makes such a big difference just a little tiny dab of resin it almost looks like a glass bead when you do this and if you see pictures of the real insect this looks very very close which is half the battle and the fun of fly tying of course so I've got that little bead of resin and I'm just going to bring my torch in and cure that off. It doesn't take long at all. Now again another completely voluntary thing or individual should I say is a rib. So I'm going to put a rib into this and I'm using glow bright for that the green. I'm sure you don't have to do this but I just like the way it looks really that's half the battle you could play around with different colors of this you could even use a wire to do this but just secure this to the shank of the hook like so and that will form my rib when I've put my dubbing in in a second I'm just going to trim off at the head there to get that out of the way one thing I will mention to you is to make sure when you're tying this fly you leave a nice gap between the end of your materials and the eye of the hook because what we're going to be putting in there in a second is both some CDC feather 
and also a little bit of deer hair and some dubbing. So there's quite a lot to go in at that part of the flight. You don't want to bulk it up or crowd the eye too much because if you do, you'll struggle to get those materials in looking right. Okay, next it's time for some dubbing. And this is a brown hair's ear dubbing, a blend which comes from Michael Zapal in Poland. Fantastic fly tire and produces some fantastic dubbing. This is just such lovely stuff to use. Lovely and soft, but really spiky. I'm just going to create a dubbing rope here to form the body of my fly. And you'll see what I mean when I start to introduce this, you can see how the little sort of egg bit sits proud at the back of the dubbing. Just going to wind this up quite spiky. Look at that, pinging off in all directions. Brilliant stuff. Lovely. Now I'm going to bring up my rib, which I hope you noticed I tied in on top of that little green um, bead so I can wind it up nice and neatly. I'm just going to do a few turns. One, two, three, four five and tie that off. Worth taking your time with this fly because there are a lot of fiddly bits. Okay, just going to tidy that up. It's a little bit too wild and crazy, that one. <laughs> it's a bit flying off in all directions. So, there we go. Just one more. A little bit of a haircut. Okay, next material going in, CDC. Now, I'm going to use three decent sized feathers for this. Just natural coloured grey CDC feather, which gives this a lovely amount of buoyancy. So I've just all I've done is I've grabbed three CDC feathers and I've just lined up all of the tips so they're level with each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie them facing backwards, like so. Just measure up, make sure that fits nicely. You're looking for it not to go too far past the end of the dubbing, to be honest. So you kind of want it just above the little green bit. So there's perfect. So just pinch and loop like that, a couple of turns, just check it for length before you finish up. I reckon I can go a little bit further. Just half a centimetre maybe. Half a centimetre. Mm -hmm. Okay that looks good. Right so now attach that with a couple of really firm turns and trim off horizontally so you're left with just a little bit of the feather there. Okay. Just secure that down to the bit by the eye and you can see now I hope why it's so important to leave that gap between the end of the dubbing and the eye of the hook because I've still got another couple of materials to go in. And the next thing I'm going to tie in is some deer hair. Don't want too much but enough to make just a little overwing at the top and I'm just going to trim off a little pinch like so. Now I'm going to use my homemade hair stacker, which is this thing here, which is made out of a lip salve tube trimmed up at the ends, just to level up those fibres. Just give it a good tap to level up the ends. Like so. Nice and even. Now I'm just going to try and introduce these to the fly. Just pinch out that one. It's a little bit long. Perfect. Swap hands. Fairly loose couple of thread wraps to make sure I'm happy. And then just trim off those little ends like so. Now it's a chance to secure everything down. And the final material going in on this fantastic little fly is to make a head out of dubbing. And I'm using for this some fox squirrel, which is brilliant for this sort of thing. Really short, really spiky dubbing. 
you can just wind that around, drop in my whip finish. You can drop a piece of varnish on there if you want to. I tend not to with my dries, to be honest. And then I'm just going to grab my dubbing teaser and just brush a few of those fibres from that dubbing to form a kind of realistic creature looking head. So there we are. That's a cracking little fella. It really is. That's my granum or sedge pattern for early season fishing with a little target point there that egg sack at the back which is a truly effective little thing to get those trout rising when perhaps even they don't want to. I hope you have fun tying the fly up and even better fun tying it on and hope it gets you a few fish to rise. Thanks ever so much for watching.